Hi class, I'm Professor Satterwhite, of course, and uh, today I thought we could talk a little bit about the By the People campaign. So remember, how we're going to use this campaign is for our initial look at critical analysis. And to look at critical analysis, we're going to use what's called the trace method. So remember, trace is text, reader, author, constraints, and exigence. This is what that stands for, TRACE, T-R-A-C-E. And this is a very specific tool that you can use to help critically analyze, uh, we'll say everything. <laughs> uh, it's a nice thing that you could use uh, for just about any possible situation, certainly for the stuff we're gonna use in this class, but outside of this class too. During the class period, we're gonna use uh, several different examples of way that we'll use TRACE. Uh, but in doing that, what we're gonna start with are the uh, are the by the people campaigns. And these will be some of the first papers that you're gonna write in the class. So I figured that we could start by looking at some of the various campaigns. So give me a second while I screen share and we will find where we need to be. All right, so we have a couple different campaigns uh, that we're gonna take a look at here. And uh, one of the, probably the easiest way that you can find it, I gave you a link before that you could find, but uh, let's just see how easy it is for us to find. Okay. So it's called By the People. And it's with the Library of Congress. And let's just go to their main homepage. Right, so what you are going to do is you are going to be a virtual volunteer, and I've never done this myself, but I understand that if you are in need of volunteer hours or want volunteer hours, uh, they do have a, a bit of a certificate thing that they can do to log this in. There might be other ways that you could do this on your own, but uh, you could look into this if you like. When we have somebody from the Library of Congress who's going to join us for one of these uh, virtual classes, uh, they should be able to talk to us about, the, about how to get uh, how to get credit for volunteers, but I'll leave that up to them. Uh, so for now, you are a volunteer with this. A volunteer, although you're being voluntold uh, to, to participate in this. <laughs> so let's get started. Oh, first, let me show you a couple things here. So they talk about uh, transcribing the papers. There's a couple ways that you can work with the, uh, with the, with the campaign. One is as a, as a transcriber, and that's what we're really gonna do is gonna be transcribing uh, some of these works. Uh, and this gives you a bunch of different ideas as far as how to transcribe. What you'll notice is as you're going through the materials that there are several different ways uh, or several different issues that will come up. Uh, probably one of the first ones is gonna be the legibility of the handwriting that you're using uh, with certain campaigns and some might be misspelled words. Uh, some might be words that you're not familiar with if they're typed. Uh, and some might be, you know, uh, uh, there's all sorts of things that come up when you're looking at these correspondences. Uh, we're going to look at a number of different correspondences in the class. You'll just choose a few of them, uh, but you have a lot to choose from, hundreds and hundreds of articles. Uh, and you might choose some just because of the brevity of the article, or you might choose some because of the interest in this specific topic. Whatever you want to do is fine uh, with me, as long as you can do the analysis on the work. But it has to begin with uh, your work in this specific project. Uh, so they talk about spelling and punctuation, uh, notes, blank pages, line breaks, abbreviations, insertions, unclear, illegible, unclear text, deletions, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes on and on from here. Uh, so let me go back there. Okay, one other thing that you could do with this is review. Uh, so a number of you might want to review some of the, uh, some of the, the campaigns uh, work as a reviewer instead of a transcriber. And uh, why you might do that is because maybe the specific campaign that you're interested in do, uh, doesn't need transcriptions anymore and they need people to review the papers to make sure they're right. Uh, and that process is gonna be a little bit different in this class because the heavy lifting will be with the transcribers. Uh, but those who are doing reviews, uh, I need you to be able to document what you're doing and how you did it uh, as well uh, to make sure that we equate, uh, we make equal the work for everybody. But it talks about how to do the reviews and how you can review transcripts, et cetera. So I'll leave that there. We can get into the nuts and bolts when we actually start uh, doing some transcriptions in class. So as it says, let's get started. All right, so we have the welcome guide and talks about your instructions about how to do this. You'll need to create an account. This is a free account 
uh, but you need to create an account for this so you can get credit. And to do so, you just click on there and then you set up your account and you move uh, from this. You can do this without setting up an account. Uh, the downside is you don't get credit for it. You know, so if you're just a volunteer and you just want to throw, uh, you know, throw this energy towards uh, creating something for the historical record. That's awesome. Super proud of you. Uh, but I think you want to get credit for this too. Uh, so make sure that you create an account uh, in here. And then that way you can also get the volunteer hours. And uh, we may just have that as an aspect of the class, just so we can make sure that you did uh, do this work. There's one more verification for that. Uh, but it talks about some of the things that you'll need to know, specifically how to submit and how to save the, uh, the projects. So we'll see. Let's get Okay, so there's a couple different, uh, there's several different campaigns. And you'll move back in here to the main page. And then right over here, they have the campaigns themselves. And I would say to browse all campaigns. So these are the ones that are open right now. Uh, some of these have already had the transcription aspects done, and there might not be much work that needs to be done there. So you might have to do reviewing if you're interested in the subject, like the Ellen Lomax uh, papers, John and Ellen Lomax papers, famous musicologist. Clara Barton, the mother of the Red Cross, uh, also a very famous person outside of the Red Cross, but Red Cross is what she's known for. Uh, we have the presidential papers at the Library of Congress. Most, if not all of this is the Teddy Roosevelt papers, uh, just so you know. Uh, we also have ones for uh, women fighting for the right to vote. So is a major campaign that lasted for hundreds of years in various capacities uh, and is still you know, an issue uh, to this day in some ways. Uh, so we have that, uh, one of the other campaigns. Sears, Spiritualists, and the Spirit World, the Experiments of Frederick Hockley. So for those who are interested in ghosts, goblins, and all those kind of things in between, uh, seances, and many, many things like that, or Henry or Harry Houdini in particular, uh, this might be a campaign that you would find uh, fascinating. Lots of stuff out here. Uh, this person was one of the ones who influenced Harry Houdini uh, to do a lot of his, uh, his famous work. So uh, we have that. Of the extraordinary Blackwell family. To be honest, I don't know a lot about them, but by their, as it implies, it seems extraordinary. And then we have uh, Teddy Roosevelt, uh, President Teddy Roosevelt, and so uh, you probably know who that is. And then uh, the a couple other ones here. I'll just fly through these quickly. Uh, the Herencia uh, campaigns. These are Spanish legal documents. You don't have to be proficient in Spanish to do this. Uh, however, it certainly does help because some of the things that you'll find are with many of the campaigns that you need to have. Uh, you need to do some uh, fact checking, a little background information, some research to be able to understand the context of the stuff that you're reading. Uh, so it might help you know, with that. Uh, organizing for women's suffrage, more on uh, women and the right to vote. Uh, and, and all these other campaigns are ones that are finished. So you can take a look at the projects, but they're finished. This is one I've worked on personally, the Mary Church Terrell, an advocate for African-Americans and women, a very famous African-American woman, uh, lived uh, largely in Washington, D.C., and was uh, very famous in the early civil rights movement. Uh, and Walt Whitman, uh, uh, Anna Dickinson, uh, Walt Whitman, I did some work with this one. Uh, and uh, let me show you a few others. And the letters to Lincoln, I did some work with this. Uh, the Lincoln uh, project, if you're interested in Abraham Lincoln, uh, that there should be some more papers that are coming up soon. Uh, what these were, were as the name implies, letters to Lincoln. Uh, and then Susan B. Anthony, uh, George Washington's papers seem pretty fascinating. Uh, letters to Civil War soldiers, a lot of these were done on Veterans Day and various veterans projects, and some of the other ones. And Rosa Parks was one that uh, was completed in record time. People were very interested in Rosa Parks, uh, and they jumped on this one very quickly. So anyway, there's a lot of other campaigns that you could take a look at, including more Ellen Lomax. Okay. All right, so uh, let's go to one of the campaigns. So I've already chosen one of the campaigns we'll work with, and this is gonna be Teddy Roosevelt's paper. So if you look here, you go to the projects, and this explains some of the background. I'm sure because you're in college, you know a good bit about Teddy Roosevelt, but if not, uh, this is where you'd find the information. Uh, you might just know him as a president, one of the progressive presidents, Republican uh, from the turn of the century, and he became the president after the assassination of uh, President McKinley uh, around the turn of the century, and uh, he served uh, for uh, four two terms. 
finished McKinley's term and then uh, served, uh, served and was elected again. Uh, so if you take a look over here, we have the projects that are not started. The ones that are not started means these are the ones that need to be transcribed. Also the ones that are in progress. Uh, so that means somebody started it, but for whatever reason, they haven't finished it. Uh, so that would be one where you might jump in and you might uh, finish the transcription process. Uh, needs review, as it says, and then the completed ones. Uh, you don't have anything to do with those, but if you're just curious to see what they look like, then feel free to go ahead and look at them. So the one that I picked a couple papers from was from this one right here. So I went into, I wanted to transcribe. Don't worry, I'm not going to transcribe here, but I'll show you how it works. Go to the not started campaigns. As you notice they're sizably smaller uh, before there's many of them. These are the only ones that have work that haven't been started yet. So I went to this one here. And there's 5,000 documents uh, that have not been transcribed. So the way that these are gonna be broken down when you go on to them, it'll look like this. Let's pick this one. Right, so I know that might look intimidating uh, to you, but you find the ones uh, that fit your style at the moment. So if you do not know how to use cursive, then this is probably not the one to use. Uh, but if you can read typewriting, you know, then this is a lot to type here, but it might be something you want to do. You can see why this one wasn't quickly transcribed. But you go through, you find some that might work for you. These all seem to be newspaper articles, so it's a good bit of work. All right, this one here is just one page, uh, typewritten. Uh, not too much. You probably type in class uh, this much. So you can uh, just type in a slightly different way in this instance. Uh, so let me, I'll just click on this real quick, just so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so some of these letters are going to be things that Teddy Roosevelt has written himself. Most of them are things that were sent to him. These are correspondence who were kept as far as his papers. So you take a look at this from our own correspondent in New York. Uh, this is a strange document, a Maimon's pathetic will. <laughs> um, this gives you a little hint of what it is uh, from our own correspondent. This will and testament, this last will and testament of a gentleman named Charles Lowesbury, uh, who recently died at the, at the Sunning Insane Asylum in Illinois has just been published. It is a remarkable document calculated to remind us that there are some riches in the world which are the heritage of us all. The instrument contains the following passages, and it goes on. Uh, but what you would do is everything I just read. You would start typing right here. So you'd start this process, uh, and then you'd type everything that's out there. And you'd put this together, and the, everything that's here, you might this might only be one page. So there's probably a second page to this that you haven't seen and might not see, uh, but this is the first page of this document. All you're responsible for is one document. Uh, however, that's the transcribing part. Uh, what you will have to do though is understand the document. So let me go to another one that I've set up. Okay, this is another clean one here. Let me show you this. There's a number of typed ones that you could use and they might be a little bit easier for you to uh, to work with than the, uh, than the cursive ones, uh, the ones that are in script. Uh, however, uh, if you're familiar with scripts, uh, those might be a little bit shorter, uh, shorter to work with. But if you notice with this one, this is actually written on White House uh, stationery, a telegram sent from the White House. Uh, and looking at this in the entire document, I don't think this is actually sent by Teddy Roosevelt, uh, but it was sent from White House stationery uh, to somebody out there in the world. So from the secretary, either from the secretary of state or to the secretary of state. So historic documents. Think about this when you're transcribing these works. When you transcribe these works, you are the first person out there who has one of the first people to even look at this document in the first place, especially uh, in over 100 years. But you're also uh, one of the first people to look at this in the modern times, except for the person who, who scanned this in the first place. And likely this just went through a machine, so they might not even taken the time to look at the scanning. Uh, but you're definitely the first person to transcribe this. Uh, so there's a heavy responsibility that goes along with this, but it's also really cool. Uh, in a kind of nerdy way, uh, just to know that you are playing a part in history, you're playing a part for other historians to look at in the future and they can see, uh, they can use the work that you've created here. Uh, so the role that you're playing is not a small role 
And the name of the program is By the People. As you know, this comes from Abraham Lincoln's uh, Gettysburg Address. Uh, so we have the uh, government by the people for the people, so it may not uh, perish from the earth. And this is By the People. So it's written specifically by you, the people. Let's go here to this one. Okay, so I moved to this one because guess what? It's short. However, what you need to have is a bit of a working knowledge of cursive. Uh, so you may not have that and that might not work for you. Uh, so, uh, but let me show you some of the things that you will need. Here's some funny things. Uh, do you know what these are? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. These are uh, paper clips uh, that the, the writing has been rusted or the, uh, the metal is rusted onto the paper itself. Uh, so that's just a little tidbit. <laughs> You'll see things like that in these papers. Uh, so looking at this right here, this is the city where this was written in. So we see the day that's 22 May 1907, over 100 years ago. Now look at that and see if I can get closer, because you might have to get really close to be able to see what it says. And I think this says Stratford, Connecticut. I'm not 100% sure. So what this means, I can tell this is Connecticut because there aren't any other states that, uh, that look like this. Uh, so I'm pretty sure this is Connecticut. Doesn't look like Colorado and doesn't look like California either. So I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, so we have that. And then from here, I might go on Google and then look up uh, Connecticut and then start filling it in. Uh, in fact, I might be able to try that now. Spell Connecticut wrong, forgive me. Connecticut and then look like Stratford. Okay, Stratford, Connecticut. Double check, make sure that's a town. Pretty sure that's a town. Double. Now let's go back to our document. Which one was it? This one? Yeah. Okay. Stratford. Does that look like Stratford? Probably. You can put that in and then maybe put a little question mark. If you go into the discussion about transcriptions, it'll also show you how to uh, how to denote that you're not 100% sure uh, that that's the word you're looking at. That'll happen, especially with the ones that are in cursive, uh, because you're reading other people's handwriting. But what you're doing with this is you're going to write it out exactly as it is. So to start that, I would start writing Stratford. I'm pretty sure that's right. So I'll just leave it. 22 May, 1907. I know we don't normally write the date like that, but that's how it's written here. So that's what we're going to do. As you can see down here, let's blow this up a little bit. Again, I'm not going to do the whole document. I'm just going to take a couple lines. His Excellency, write a title. Theodore. Washington. There's no DC in there, so you just leave it blank. Not sure why they didn't bother to put that in, but they didn't. So. Dear sir. And then from here, uh, you go ahead and just continue with the writing. So you look at this, and what you'll see, what you'll find is uh, a fairly interesting little document. Uh, it turns out this is a bit of an angry letter uh, that Mr. Roosevelt got. I had uh, just read your article in Everybody's Magazine. You have deliberately, uh, not sure what that word is, uh, out of your way, gone, maybe gone out of your way. And this is how you look at it, because I don't know how, what that word is right there, but then I see out of your way. Uh, and then when I see that, it says, you have deliberately, what is that, your year or something? I can't tell this word right here. And then I said, okay, but I know this one right here is out of your way. So you have deliberately blank out of your way. It's almost like that game Wheel of Fortune, if you've ever seen that on TV. Uh, some of the words will be like that. So you have gone deliberately out of your way uh, to attack a man of whom you know nothing and who is 
honestly trying to do a man's work in the world, period. Uh, you have something used to uh, use the advantage of your high position to injure him and you have hidden behind another. What did he hide behind? I don't know. Uh, so since this is the last part, this is the only part you need to transcribe. Uh, so in doing that, this is a fairly short transcription. So it benefits you who paid attention in the cursive class. And for those who didn't, you can learn it. Uh, it's still possible to learn. I had to learn when I was in second grade, third grade. And you might learn it too. Anyway, um, after that, that part is done. However, if you have this, one of the things that you'll need to do is you'll also need to make sure that the you understand what the document is. So how do you do that? Okay, so this is only one page. So that means you need to go to, you can see what page number this is. It's page 202. So I will go to 203 and go. I've already pulled it up there, but I'll show you. And then from here, I finish the letter and start reading. So that's gonna be the tricky part because how do you do a trace analysis when you don't know everything that's on the original document? You know, so if you don't know everything that's in the original document, all you know is this person is angry because President Roosevelt has, has injured this person uh, with a direct attack and he's hiding behind what? We don't know uh, his position uh, to do something. Uh, but what you need to do is finish the letter. Uh, so you need, you don't have to transcribe the letter, but you got to read it. You got to be able to write it and understand it. So that means you got to read the whole thing. So that might take a little bit of time. And then while you're at it, you know, if you're there and you feel the urge and the, and the desire, you can go ahead and just uh, do some more transcribing too. It might be fun for you. I'll leave that up to you though. Uh, you don't have to do that, but you do need to understand what you're reading. Uh, so you can do a trace analysis. So in looking at that, I would look at this and just from what I know already, I see, okay, this is the text. The text is a letter to President Roosevelt. It says that, uh, it's pretty clear what that is. Uh, and this is a, a letter that's part of the Library of Congress's Teddy Roosevelt papers, uh, the Rough Rider to Bull Moose letters to the, uh, to the president campaign. And this is uh, you know, part of the, what you would start to use to transcribe the, or to do your trace analysis. So we have that, and then we have the reader. So who is the reader for this? Take a guess. <laughs> who do you think is the reader for this? Teddy Roosevelt, right? So that's gonna be the original audience for this. So who is the other reader for that? So take that one more further step. Who is the other reader? And the other reader is gonna be historians. People are looking at this because why is this out here in the first place? Uh, probably it's gonna be historians. Historians, uh, biographers of Teddy Roosevelt. You exhaust all the possibilities of people who might be reading this. Uh, archivists at the Library of Congress, uh, maybe the readers of Everybody's Magazine, that's a magazine. And that would be something that you would look up also to see if there's something about this thing called Everybody's Magazine. Uh, so then you go into the, uh, that's the TR, so the um, text and the reader, TR, Teddy Roosevelt, too. Uh, text and reader. And then the author is, you got to go to the end and find out who that author is. So we look in there and we see, and who is this author? And we can turn this sideways. Very sincerely yours. And it looks like it might be Charles Young, maybe, or Charles Long, or Chad Long, or something like that. Uh, but try your best. Do your work with this. Uh, and so who is this person? You can try and look the person up. It might be easy to see. Uh, it might be easy to find out who this person is. You might have to do some detective work. But if you can't figure that out, then you could, uh, then in this instance, I would probably say that this is clearly an angry reader of that magazine, and uh, possibly a friend of the person that was injured uh, by Teddy Roosevelt. All right. So we have that. So we have the author of the letter itself. You can also say, if you want to go further with this, maybe the Library of Congress is the author of this service. Uh, so that would be the transcription part. So there's a couple ways that you could see the author of this. Uh, and I would like for you to go as far as you can with that. So who is the author of this? The original author is this person here down at the bottom uh, who signed the letter. And then from there also, uh, we could say that uh, by proxy, the Library of Congress is the author because they're the ones who put this out here uh, for us to see and to transcribe. All right, so we have that. Constraints. What are the constraints uh, that we have with this? The most obvious constraint, uh, well, the first constraint with the author is that the author's uh, 
you know, writing a letter to the president of the United States. So whether the president's going to get this or not, who knows? I don't know if President Roosevelt read this, but uh, we can, yeah, I don't know, who knows? He might've read it, might not have read it. Uh, I guess they, my guess is they probably get a lot of letters and they might not pay that much attention to these kind of things, but who knows? Uh, so that would be a constraint for the original writer uh, to see if somebody's actually, the person who's he's intended to send this to is actually going to read it. So that would be one. So what would be the Library of Congress's constraints in putting this up here? And I would say things like this. I can't really even read this person's name that well. So that's probably long. I don't know what this first part is. So the difficulty in reading cursive or for the Herencia documents, maybe uh, proficiency in Spanish, you know, would be something. Uh, handwriting in this instance would be an issue, but in other instances, it could be uh, various things. So these are some of the things to pay attention to with constraints. What are the things that hold somebody back from understanding what is being said? Uh, so that would be one. And then the exigence uh, for this, and this would again go with those two authors. Uh, so the exigence for Mr. Long to write this letter is that he is clearly mad about this, uh, about this injury that Tezzy Roosevelt has given uh, to this author. Uh, so that's one. Uh, so that would be uh, the reason for this. So he's angry, he writes this letter out and sends it off. You know, just like you might send off an angry email or send off an angry text and possibly wish that you didn't send this out. Now this document is sitting around, floating around in the archives for years and 100 plus years, probably maybe 150 years uh, after, or over 100 years uh, after this person has written it, maybe 100 years after this person has died, uh, we're looking at this document too. Totally out of context, but we're looking at this document. Uh, so his exigence would be, he's writing an angry letter. The exigence for the Library of Congress is... What do you see the the exigences? And again, the exigence, if you forgot what that term means, it's the uh, the reason that this exists at that moment. Why does this exist at that time? Uh, so in looking at that, we'll say the exigence is for the Library of Congress to put this out here because they want these documents to be read. They want these documents to be seen by people and they want these uh, works to be read by future historians. So this is a trace analysis of these documents. And this is what you're gonna do. So the first part of what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the campaign, you're gonna understand the campaign. You're also going to read up on how to transcribe the documents, all the information's on that first website we went to, uh, going back to the first one. Uh, and then from there, uh, you're going to look at the, uh, you're going to go to the various campaigns and you're going to find a campaign that you want to work on, whether it's transcription or reviews. Uh, and then you're going to go from the uh, from the uh, campaign, you're going to transcribe or review, but preferably transcribe. Uh, and then from the transcription part, you're going to write your trace analysis. And your trace analysis will be written not as bullet points, uh, but as one big paragraph where you, in bold letters, the text of the document is bold. The word text is bold. Uh, the reader is, you know, the author is, the constraints are, and the exigence is, et cetera. And that's your, and that's your text or your trace. Um, the other thing that you'll have on here is you'll have a citation at the very top of this document. It'll be similar to an annotated bibliography where at the begin, top of the document, you'll have a citation and the citation will be for this document. You'll have to look up how to cite this. We'll talk about that in class because it might be a little tricky and there might be a few ways that you would cite this, but we'll work on the citations in class. All right, if you have any questions, please holler at me. Otherwise, I, stop sharing here. Otherwise, I really appreciate your time and I appreciate uh, the work that you're about ready to do. Uh, just to say it one more time, what you're doing is historic. You're really working in something that's going to be uh, what we call a high impact practice in the university. And it's going to be uh, a really nice feather in your cap for stuff that you've worked on. You could add this into your resume, you could add this into volunteer hours, or at the very least, you could know that you took a, uh, that you played a role in history. All right. Thank you very much for your time. And I will talk to you soon.